formulation to development to assembly. Weapons are developed for fleet use. Beginning with an idea, research personnel formulate and revise designs. With management's approval, development begins. Once development is successful, a new weapon is assembled. The process is complex because each portion of the weapon must be examined and tested to meet required specifications. Fusing systems, rocket motors, propellants, explosives and other ordnance items are often tested and retested for evaluation purposes. Various facilities here at the Naval Weapons Center provide a research environment for weapons development. And these weapons are evaluated at a variety of range facilities that provide a safety zone for necessary tests. the scenes at these facilities, maintenance personnel, ordnance workers, technicians, scientists, and engineers provide support services for the RDT&E process. Workstations in these areas require the employee to be alert at all times and to follow all safety regulations. To most people, warheads and weapon systems represent large-scale explosions. Yet all too often, another hazard is overlooked. The threat that exists from small explosive charges and components. The booster that ignites the warhead can be deadly. The energy it releases has cost lives. The tests you'll see in this videotape have been staged to demonstrate the damage potential of small amounts of explosives. Keep in mind these are secondary explosives that can be handled with no problem if all safety procedures are followed. When working with large-scale explosives, everyone has the incentive to follow the safety rules. But when working with small-scale explosives, the incentive isn't as great due to the lack of appreciation of the hazard. Of the eight experiments you will see, two would definitely have been fatal, and a third probably fatal. Accurate analysis of the injuries inflicted upon the anthropomorphic dummy is not important. What we are trying to show is that even the smallest explosive can inflict painful and serious injuries. For the next few minutes, let's take a look at the energy involved in these detonations. The victim is an anthropomorphic dummy, about the same size and weight as an adult male. Our first test involves a one-half inch diameter by one-half inch length CH6 pellet. It weighs 2.73 grams, about the same weight as a penny. This test will demonstrate fragmentation in a lathe collet. Here's the same test in slow motion. as seen in the arms and chest can be the greatest hazard. The seriousness of the injury depends upon what part of the body the fragment hits. If a fragment hits the juggler vein, even the smallest device could be fatal. are the remains of the collet. This test will demonstrate the explosive power involved with a piece of mild detonating fuse, also called MDC or mild detonating cord. It contains 10 grains per foot. 
about six inches are used in this test, equal in weight to only four one hundredths of a dime. This test will show damage caused to the leather gloved hand of the anthropomorphic dummy. Three, two, one, fire. Here from another angle. The same test in slow motion shows damage to be severe. You can see the damage done to the leather glove. Think about what it could do to your hand. Our next test involves an RP-83 detonator which is an exploding bridge wire detonator, equivalent of an engineer's special blasting cap. There are 0.94 grams, less than half of a dime, of explosives in the RP-83. This test is against a leather over latex glove filled with jello. Three, two, one, fire. next explosive is data sheet flexible explosive. It weighs 70 grams or about two and a half ounces. The test is against the anthropomorphic dummy hand. Three, two, one, fire. Notice how the one half inch steel plate tabletop oscillates. These injuries would probably be fatal. This test involves a Mark 38 booster used in the Sparrow 3. It contains 53 grams, about 1.9 ounces of explosive. The test is against the anthropomorphic dummy. hole in the one half inch steel plate tabletop. There's even a hole in the ground. Boosters of this size have been involved in fatal accidents and these injuries would have been fatal. This is an inert APAM charge weighing about two ounces. In 1970.